Good morning. Today is May 30th, year 2021. Trinity Sunday. Welcome to St. John's United Church here in Alliston. Let us have our beginning with musical instrument. Lighting the Christ candle. Our Christian tradition teaches that there is mystery and wonder in our relationship with God, a mystery and wonder that opens in our worship and in our active discipleship. Mystery, yes. At the same time, revelation. One God whose fullness is lived in relationship. We light this Christ's candle, naming Jesus as a life-giving, gracious presence within our relationship with the Creator and the Spirit. Call to worship. Here we come to experience the presence of God. Here we seek to be inspired by the way of Jesus for the week ahead. Here we enter, the look, enter to look for ways to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn from Voices United, number 315, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
opening prayer. God, our Creator, the one and only who started this world and gave life to community. Christ, our Savior, who came to earth to live and die for us and teach us your lessons of love. Holy Spirit, the breath of life, who takes away our sorrows and gives new beginnings. Scripture reading this morning is taken from the first Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 6. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. This is the, Lord, the Word of God. And thanks be to God. We have a special music for our gathering. Most of us, I believe, are familiar with the Trinitarian statement, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. How about the doctrine of Trinity? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three persons, but one in unity. What does it mean by that? Three persons, but one in unity. Does it make sense? Do you believe, do you believe it because it doesn't make sense? Some understand the doctrine like this. God is a being that shows himself in three different ways like water shows itself 
in the form of ice, steam, and liquid. Others believe that the Trinity is made up of three distinctive personalities, and these three are in complete unity in love and purpose. The Trinity, the Trinity doctrine basically says that there is one God. Take a look at a diagram on the screen. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. Three, but they make up one God. Each is co-equal and co-eternal. Again, does it make sense? Plotinus, the Neoplatonist of the third century, gave the doctrine to Christianity through Augustine. He gave us an analogy with a natural phenomenon to see the simple meaning of the doctrine that has baffled comprehension over 17 centuries. I found, however, his explanation quite makes sense, which I like to share with you this morning. He said that we could understand how one God can have three aspects if we think of the sun, its light, and its active energy. The sun in heaven, just imagine, the sun in heaven is compatible to the Father God of Trinity. It is a glowing glove and glove of fire. The fire of the sun does not go forth into the ends of space, but abides at home. Like a match which you strike in a dark room, the fire stays on the match. It does not leave it. The fire stays, but it generates and sends forth its sun called the light. This, the light, is the second aspect of God of Trinity. It is of the same essence with the Father, yet not He. According to the modern physical science, a ray of the sun's light in the void of space, not near a planet, is inert. The ray is important, inactive, and uncreative. The ray of light can generate no life until it falls upon a surface of a material body, a globe, or a planet. Only by incidence upon its opposite pole called matter can the light of the sun come to its creative function. The Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 describes it too. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. A new life can be conceived when the seed of God falls in the ground. A new life is only possible when the ray of the sun reaches the surface of the earth, like the breath of God permeate into the dust of Adam. It is in the same way that Jesus, the Son of God, is conceived in the Mary's womb, the symbol of the Mother of Life by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power and energy to tie the spirit and matter together is the third aspect of God of Trinity. Last Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost, the breath of life 
blowing like a wind and fire to give a new life to people from all around the world. The Holy Spirit, representing as wind and fire last Sunday, is the energy and power to wet, to tie, to bond, to completely different substances, matter and spirit. So the story of the Son of God begins with conception in Mother Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit. At his baptism, Jesus is recognized as the Son of God. When the Spirit descended upon him, after his baptism, the Son of God is led by the Spirit to the wilderness, in other words, to the world of matters, to be tempted by the by the evil. Who are we? We are the rays of the light from God in spirit. We are also children of Mary, conceived by the spirit. In John's gospel, Jesus identifies himself as the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 2, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus also identifies us, his disciples, as the light of the world. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world. What then is the role of the light? A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lamp, lamp stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. And that is the main role of the light of the world. Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. But remember, once the Son of God falls on the matter, he is subject to the law of matters and suffer all things, even death. He will, however, endure all things by the help of the Spirit and eventually is converted to the new form of sonship to return to the Father. As we see the cycle of the prodigal son in the parable of Luke chapter 15, his lost sonship is recovered when he is back to the Father or back to home. And, and that is our destiny, too. So let me conclude my reflection this morning with the letter to Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Amen and Amen.
I'd like to invite Ken Pratt to come forward, who is the Chair of Stewardship, to make an announcement. Good morning. Normally, I'd be standing in front of the congregation thanking whoever had arranged the previous uh, fundraising supper or thanking John Doddington and the choir for putting on a concert that would have raised us money. But COVID has taken that away from us. And uh, so I'm here today to say thank you for the past year and your faithful giving in order to keep the life of the Church of St. John's not only active here in the building, but active in the community. Now, as COVID drags on into its second year, we're getting a bit of fatigue. And you know, back in the, since this is the Olympics, back in the Olympic time, there was one race, ran over two days, and the winner wasn't the person who came across the finish line first. It was the person who came across the finish line with their torch still lit. And here in the season of Pentecost, as we look on the fire of the Holy Spirit that comes down in our lives, I ask you again to keep that torch inside of you burning. Pentecost is a time when the Spirit brought to the believers our faith with fire and wind. Our offerings are a response to that Pentecostal fire. Our work in the world, our mission of the people of God. We give to the mission of the church so that the church can continue to bring warmth of Christ's fire to everyone. We invite you to make a financial gift, if you can, now to keep the torch of St. John's burning bright. There are three ways to donate to support the work of your St. John's United Church family. By using Canada Post to mail in donations through electronic direct e-transfer from your bank or by using the icon on the church's webpage. Holy Spirit, help us to feel your warming fire every day. Please accept these gifts and those given through par as our way of saying, of sharing your power and grace with others. Amen. Let's move on to the closing hymn from Voices United, number 321, Maker in Whom We Live.
commissioning. May the love of God, our Creator, be all around us. May the gift of everlasting life be in our hearts eternally with Jesus. May the blessing of new beginnings from the Holy Spirit be with each of us. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.